class at Physical Therapy. Good evening and welcome to Henry County Schools Parent and Family Connect. I'm your host this evening, Monica Hatchett, and I'm proud to have with us tonight two representatives from our Student Services Department. First, David Scott, and then from Laurel Park Middle School, Ms. Joellen Hilton. Tonight we're going to talk about school-wide discipline and the new model that we're implementing in Henry County Schools through part of a grant that was given to us by the state of Virginia. Mr. Scott, tell us a little bit about this PBIS grant. Well, uh, Ms. Hatchett, back in December of last year, we were fortunate enough to uh, uh, write a grant proposal and have that accepted and, and have a grant awarded uh, for two years to do an exploration process on what is uh, called PBIS, or Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. And so we've committed uh, Laurel Park in the first year to be the pilot school uh, for, for the PBIS um, learning and, and exploration process. And we're hoping to bring on board other uh, feeder schools in the next few years. And what is involved in school-wide discipline? School-wide discipline really is about setting a culture where all students can be successful, and it's it's looking at uh, it's looking at academics, it's looking at the environment for um, you know what is causing students to be off target, and how do we get those students back on task as quickly as possible, and providing supports for them along the way that keep them in the classroom. Now, Ms. Hilton, you all have been using this to a certain degree at Laurel Park. You're using it heavily again this year. What are some of the successes that you've seen by using school-wide discipline? Well, I think it's provided our students um, consistency in knowing what our teachers' expectations are. Um, in the 15-16 school year, um, coming in new to the middle school, um, we saw that that was a need um, because our middle school students coming from elementary school where they have one or two teachers, expectations are pretty consistent because they're in small classrooms and they only have one or two teachers. But when they get to middle school, they can have five or six teachers. So we saw a need that for the students and the developmental process that our students are going through at middle school that they really need consistent expectations in every classroom. So when they go to room to room, they know the expectations are the same. So we actually worked with um, middle school in um, Roanoke, Virginia, who was also working with several other middle schools in that area. And they helped us develop what we call the Lancer Code. And Fieldale Collinsville Middle School has the CAV Code, and that's our school-wide discipline plan. And within that, um, we've worked really closely with our teachers for a whole year in uh, looking at providing consistent expectations for our students in every classroom that they go in, that they know that when they go in one room, the expectations are gonna be the same when they go to the next classroom. And I think the students, although sometimes they think it's um, a little tough, they realize that um, the expectations are clear and they know what's expected of them in the classroom. And as Mr. Scott stated, um, our whole reason for doing this is to provide a safe and orderly learning environment for our students so our students can be successful um, in every way when they get to middle school. And you've brought with you tonight the Lancer Code and I'm just going to read a few pieces from it. The purpose is to help support fellow Lancers by creating a safe learning environment that is conducive to student learning and the creation of positive relationships. And this poster is in every classroom in the school and there's a ticket process. What does it mean to get a ticket and how is that different than traditional discipline? Well, students don't like to get tickets um, just like we don't like to get tickets when we maybe mess up on the road and get a speeding ticket or something like that. So students know that if they get a ticket um, that they've broken one of our um, expectations of the Lancer Code and based on the number of tickets they have, consequences for the discipline can get more severe. Um, but we also work with our students to provide um, interim um, small rewards every four and a half weeks and then big rewards at the nine weeks for those students who have only received one ticket or zero tickets then those students get to participate in what we think is a really big reward and they've decided what they want that reward to be so um, they work hard for what they're what they're going to get for their reward so they enjoy that piece of it and, and to kind of jump in on that um, what we're trying to do is invert 
the traditional model where students are getting a lot of attention for uh, stepping outside of the lines and, and for doing you know, th things that we want them not to do. And so the PBIS model is to pay more attention to those students who are being compliant, those students who are um, you know, really experiencing school in the right way. And so we want to shine a light on those students and reward them and build in incentives that keep them on track throughout the year and, and focus on their positive behavior much more than on their uh, on the things that get them that punitive response. And while there are still traditional discipline referrals, one of the things I noticed you brought with you tonight is a good news card or a good news accolade maybe that you can send home to students. Tell me a little bit about how these work and maybe about some examples of how they've been used in the past. Well, again, this is another piece that we've added. Uh, we want students to be recognized for the great things they're doing at Laura Park, not just if they get a ticket or a referral to, to an administrator, but we want them to be recognized for the great things that they're doing. And either the teacher can send this home or she can send it to the administrator but the administrator to also recognize a student who's doing great things at our school. All right, so Mr. Scott, tell us a little bit about what you've seen, trends or statistics. What are you noticing about discipline in the schools or positive reinforcements in the schools? Well, when we started uh, this journey, one of the uh, pieces of data that we were looking at is to see if, if there was a disparity in our school division that mirrored what the state was noticing in, in the state's numbers. And that was an overrepresentation of African American students in the discipline infractions, uh, and an overrepresentation of our students with disabilities in, in those same uh, discipline numbers. And what we're finding is that we weren't um, as on, off balance as the state was, or, or out of balance rather. Um, but we did find that there are uh, pockets of students that, that we need to focus on a little bit more. Um, I think Ms. Hilton. Uh, at her school, she realized that a lot of the infractions were coming with uh, boys, not you know, an even split between boys and girls. So uh, at the earliest stages, it's helping us to um, see what kind of story our data is telling and, and not just assume that we know everything that's going on uh, or assume that everything plays out in the, these perfect um, you know, ratios. So it, it is helping us to uh, figure out uh, where we need to invest more time with students in reteaching expectations. So I think it's been very positive from that standpoint. Is it, it's getting, it, it's starting those difficult conversations with our staff and having us, um, you know, kind of be uh, really on the lookout for for where we might have shortcomings. You know, after implementing um, the Lancer Code for one year, we had teachers come back um, at the end of the school year and look at things that we might need to change. Uh, we didn't change anything during their first year of implementation, but we wanted to wait, do it for a year with fidelity, and then see where we needed to make changes. So we worked on that, um, and we looked at where we thought it would be more fair for students and expectations again. And then we had um, a large group of students who came in during the summer. And then they also uh, looked at the Lancer Code and, and looked at some of the revisions that the teachers made and gave their feedback. So it really is a joint effort between um, the school community. Um, it really helps teachers to be consistent for their expectations of students. And then also students, as they go from classroom to classroom, they know that the expectations are the same in any room they go in at Laura Park. That's great. When we come back, we're going to hear from a parent and a student about their impressions of the Lancer Code and this school-wide discipline system. Bassett Physical Therapy specializes in sports medicine, physical, occupational, pediatric, and aquatic therapies. Our professional staff is ready to help you today. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Bassett PT has changed my life, and they can change yours too. Bassett Physical Therapy is located in the heart of Stanleytown within minutes of Bassett, Collinsville, Fieldale, and Martinsville. It's worth the drive for quality care. Bassett Physical Therapy, changing lives one person at a time. You're watching BTW21, your neighborhood network, the pride of Martinsville. 
It's the Bottom Line Sales Event at Blue Ridge Nissan. For a limited time, get our bottom line price on all models. Plus, we're paying you to come test drive a new vehicle. You'll get $1 for every mile you drive from your home to the dealership. Come in today and get the bottom line price on a new Titan. You'll save up to $12,000. Or drive home a new Altima and save up to $6,000. Plus, get our exclusive warranty forever on all our vehicles. Blue Ridge Nissan in Martinsville, across from the Speedway on Greensboro Road. Also, shop with us online at the Blue Ridge Way. Com. Sign up for Pharmacy Text Alerts today. It's a simple, easy way to refill your prescription. Simply go online and register at www.refillrx.com or download the app to your smartphone. Getting your prescriptions just got easier at Family Pharmacy in Stanley Town, serving our community since 1996. At Southern Virginia Properties, you will receive friendly, reliable service for all your real estate needs. I really appreciated the patience and the time that Missy took with me and the flexibility into going to various houses, as well as being friendly and courteous and very professional. I chose Marlene as Southern Virginia Properties, an excellent company, very professional. Uh, I wouldn't deal with anybody else. Thank you. American Auto Spa on Virginia Avenue in Collinsville. And don't forget, the Pet Wash is open 24-7. Welcome back to Family Connect. Tonight we're talking with members of the staff and the student body at Laurel Park Middle School about positive behavior intervention supports or PBIS and school-wide discipline. Before the break we heard from David Scott, our Student Support Services Director, and Ms. Joellen Hilton, Principal at Laurel Park. And now we have with us Brittany Harrison and her dad Brian. You guys probably recognize them from the community. So tell us a little bit about Lancer Code and why it makes a difference to you as a student, Brittany. The Lancer Code, I think it makes a difference because it shows who you can trust and who you can depend on based on their actions. Can you give me an example of that? Okay, so if you get a ticket it can show whether, like, you can be trustworthy. Okay. So, I am probably correct in assuming that you have not earned a ticket. I have not. Right. <laughs> um, at the beginning of the school year, you have to sign a contract, contract. essentially. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that contract, and as a parent, what do you notice? Um, I noticed um, that they actually give them several options. Uh, when they get their tickets because I mean they, they give like to five tickets before they actually have to go and meet with the uh, parent guardian and administrators um, so like the first ticket um, when they get their ticket they're actually the parents are actually notified of what the action was that happened at school you know where when they were back in elementary school they got those day planners and of course pet teachers had time to write the information in the planner what the child did at school and you know, in middle school, of course, it's a different it's a different avenue of life. So the teachers don't have time to write all that information in a planner. And you don't want to wait till a parent teacher conference to find out that your child's been acting up in school. Uh, so with that ticket, uh, the parents are notified as well as as the students. So what the disciplinary problems will be. And it's not just about tickets and not the about bad tickets. side of things. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about the small rewards and the big rewards, and maybe one that you really liked. Small reward, I feel like it's actually helped a lot of students to want to get to that end of the nine weeks mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I feel like it's just, it's bigger than, almost, it's almost bigger than the big reward. 
Okay, so what are some examples of small rewards that you've participated in? We get to watch movies during class. We get to eat lunch with a friend and just hang out. Okay, and what was the big reward last year? Last year, the big reward for the end of the school year was to watch the teachers play basketball and volleyball game. Very fun. So, how are these rewards selected? You have um, teachers who ask you what would you like to do, and they give you choices, and you just go amongst your class and vote. All right, so from a parent perspective, Mr. Harrison, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about the investment that you see students making in this. If they get to select the rewards, they get to select the incentives that they're shooting for, how does that make a difference? It makes a big difference because students at that age, they see where they have an input, they have a voice, a buy-in, and that actually adults actually listen to something that they want to do because um, when they're in middle school, uh, kids, they, they talk about they don't have time to meet with other other colleagues in school they have time to talk and so with these uh, awards uh, they actually have the time and have the input on what they want to do as with their peers so what would you like to see done differently or if you don't have any suggestions what are some things that are different this year based on the feedback from your peers for the Lancer code that maybe are a departure from what happened last year I think something that's been changed differently is that the small reward, if you get one ticket, you lose that first versus the big reward. Last year, you would lose the big reward first and then the small reward. Okay. So I feel like students will do better if they lose the small reward better versus the big reward because they'll be aiming for the big reward. And that's a good idea. Um, tell me, do you think this makes students a little more proactive in taking ownership of themselves? And what do you think, long term, the difference in this kind of discipline or behavior supports will make for you and for your peers? I think that it will make them not act as act up as much, and I feel like they will just want to be the best person they can be. And I think that's one of the keys is, is. to make them want to be a better person in some way, be a better citizen. Last year, one of the things that the students at the school did were to kind of boast about the things they were proud of. Mm -hmm. And everybody took a picture with something pride and that told them a little bit about who they were as a student. And those were shared around the school. Uh, we even shared some of those in the media and on social media. So that intrinsic pride in becoming a better student, being a good citizen, knowing how to then go out into the world and be a citizen as well, I think is part of the spirit of the Lancer Code or at FC, the CAV Code. Um, as a parent, how do I get more involved? How do I know more about what's going on? Maybe not just discipline-wise, but at school in general. What are some ways that we should encourage parents to be part? The way parents can get involved, I'm actually the PTO president for Laurel Park Middle School this year. And a, a great way for parents to get involved is to get involved with the PTO. Um, it's a great way to volunteer as well as um, being there, being a voice, and actually helping out at the school. Um, we've already actually started our first um, fundraiser for the school this year, which we're doing a raffle and it is the sales are going really well um, the first prize the tickets are a dollar piece of course and the first prize is a ps4 with a one-year subscription to with games second prize a 32 inch smart tv third prize is a year subscription to magna vista's games uh, you go to all the games um, and also we'll be giving a prize away to the student to sell the most tickets that will get a um, a party up to 10 at the sports lanes. So any student um, that uh, goes to Law Park Middle School, you can see them and you can buy tickets from them. You can buy as many books as you want because we want to make this a huge fundraiser. Um, but it's a great way to get involved is join the PTO. And I think this year um, alone already, we've already signed up like 40, like 45 parents to join the PTO already. Um, so that's a great way to get involved. 
Now, as a member of the PTO, yes. I'm not just fundraising for mm -hmm. schools, which yes. is great because our schools need those supports. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about what this fundraiser does for the students at the school. Um, this the fund the funds we receive from from the fundraiser will actually actually buy some things that the school can use to operate. They don't get the operating funds from actually the county. Uh, for an example, um, it's like a program that the teachers want to use that they can't get the funding from the um, schools, then the PTO can actually buy those. Uh, school, uh, student incentives, the PTO will purchase those. Uh, like the student awards, the PTO will purchase those. It's a lot that the parents don't know um, that the school doesn't, doesn't pay for, that the PTO will actually step in and, and pay for those items for the students. And an active PTO is a really important part of not just elementary school where we typically see yes. families involved, but talk a little bit about the other things the PTO does. I know you support student activities. Mm -hmm. You also host evenings for parents to be engaged. We do. Uh, teacher appreciation. Um, because our teachers, they're the ones that actually take care of our kids while we're at work every day. So one of the big things we look at um, is a teacher appreciation month. Uh, we actually take care of our teachers while they're um, at school. Maybe give them a break, go watch the class while teachers can take a break or buy them lunch. Um, and this year, I can't tell you what we're going to do this year for the teachers. It's going to be a surprise, but they're off I guarantee they're going to be excited about the gift we're going to give them this year from PTO. Well, teachers, it sounds like you have a lot to look forward to. When we come back, we're going to wrap up with Ms. Hilton and members of our student and parent body at Laurel Park Middle School. Please join us in just a few moments. If you're looking for the best selection of trucks and SUVs in the area at a price that cannot be beat, then log on to AutosByNelson.com and search our entire inventory right from your own home. We have the names you want. Ford, Mazda, Chevy, Subaru, Toyota, Honda, and more. All makes, all models from every lot. Competitively priced and ready to move. Search our entire inventory right from your mobile device. You can even schedule a service appointment or apply for financing, all at AutosByNelson.com. You're watching BTW21, your neighborhood network, the pride of Martinsville. My family and I and our staff would like to say thank you for the last 20 years of being able to serve you. If you're having any back problems, neck problems, headaches, we'd like to help you. I'm here Monday through Friday to serve you. Give our office a call. 632-3334. If you're ready to stop the pain, call Hill Chiropractic Center, 1141 Memorial Boulevard. I'm Danae Thompson, a pharmacist here at Chatham Family Pharmacy, where we have a full range of prescription and non-prescription products, nationally certified pharmacy technicians, and can offer you friendly service with a minimal weight and the lowest prices in the area. We offer compliance packaging, free delivery up to 10 miles, and are conveniently located on Highway 29 in Tight Squeeze Plaza. So stop by and find out how we can help you and your family be healthy at Chatham Family Pharmacy. Bingo! Family fun for everyone. Fontaine Brewerton Bingo every Tuesday night. Win cash prizes. Doors open at 5.30. Games start at 7.00. Visit Fontaine Ruiton Club online or on social media for updates, prize amounts, and more. Proceeds benefit our community, scholarships, and local school children. Fontaine Ruiton Club, 1903 Joseph Martin Highway, Martinsville. Clarence's Steakhouse is more than just a steakhouse. We have breakfast, lunch specials seven days a week with dine-in and carry-out orders. We have served our community for over 45 years and we treat every customer just like family. So whether you want a fresh cut steak or all you can eat fish every Friday night at Clarence's, just stop by and be part of the Clarence's family. Clarence's Steakhouse is located at 6636 Greensboro Road in Ridgeway.
Welcome back to Family Connect. Tonight we've been talking with representatives from Laurel Park Middle School and we only have a few minutes left so I want to make sure we get to answer this really important question. Tell me a little bit about the great things that we need to know about middle school. For students who transition from elementary to middle school, sometimes it seems a little scary to them. What do you love most about middle school? I love to be able to socialize with my friends and have a lot more choices. Like exploratories, they're just fun. You have get to choose what you would like to do. And do you have a favorite class? I like Spanish. Okay, very good. Now, Dad, what's your favorite thing about middle school? They're getting older. Mm -hmm. uh, middle school is, is a huge transition from elementary to middle school. And usually middle school is like the underserved audience that trying to transition. And I can say for both, both of our children, this has been a great middle school um, experience for both of them. So it's, it's, I, don't, I can't see that huge transition anymore. They kind of just roll right in, fit right in. And I think a lot of that comes with great leadership in the building. It does. Ms. Hilton, you've been there for a couple years now. What do you love about middle school? I love our students. I love being able to have conversations with students. Um, they really like to share um, because they like to socialize, but they really like to tell you their wants and needs. Um, they like to tell you things that they need at school. And uh, they don't have a problem sharing that information. Sometimes they like to do it in private, not in a group, um, but they're able to communicate and they're able to share what their goals are as they're moving forward. And it's really nice to see them start to transition and start to look towards high school and even college and to see them setting goals for themselves. Great things are happening across the school division, but if you haven't been to Laurel Park Middle School lately, you need to check them out. Please join us either in person or you can talk with us on our website through Let's Talk any time of day. We look forward to seeing you again next week. When it comes to something as important as your home's electrical work, call on your friends at Shively Electric Company. We're proud to have been serving this community for over 40 years. We're the people that you greet at the grocery store, we're the people that you worship with at church, and then we're the people that have fun at local community events. We've been here with you from day one. We'll be here with you when you need us. So for all of your electrical needs, call on your friends at Shively Electric Company. Hearing healthcare has changed forever. Life as you know it will never be the same. An all new approach will let you hear 30% better in difficult environments with all new patented technologies working in harmony with your brain. This new technology has created less effort, more recall, and a better ability to understand in difficult environments. This truly changes everything. Call us today for more information on these new technologies. Ashbrook Audiology, where relationships matter. Come on down to Los Nartanos, right next to the Dutch Inn. Great food, great prices, and you're always guaranteed to have a good time. So come on down to Los Nartanos, next to the Dutch Inn. There are many reasons to choose Monroe Muffler Brake and Service for all of your car's maintenance, repair, and tire needs. We work on your schedule with convenient evenings, Saturday, and even Sunday hours. We've earned our customers' trust with over 50 years of guaranteed quality service. And one more popular reason is Monroe's oil change and more for only $19.99. Plus, we'll rotate your tires, check tire pressure, and inspect your brakes for free. Trust Monroe to keep your car and your family safe. For dealer quality service for less, it's Monroe Muffler Brake and Service. Hi, my name is Ronald Bennett. Hi, I'm Jordan Bailey. Hello, my name is Stan Legas. And well, welcome, welcome to, to Family, Family Pharmacy. Pharmacy. We're located on 58 West outside of Danville at the Broswell Station. Over the past three years, I'd like to thank you for your business and your support. And in the next years to come, we we'll look forward to helping you and serving you in the future. Please stop by and let us take care of all your pharmacy needs, or you can give us a call at 434-685-1509.
Your face tells a story, one that is uniquely yours. Our desire is to help you recapture your natural beauty. I'm board certified through the Academy of Aesthetic Medicine and specialize in the treatment of wrinkles, facial sagging, uneven skin tone, dark spots, acne, and other scars. For our clients, we create an exclusive treatment plan using non-surgical cosmetic procedures and medical strength skin care to help you to age gracefully and to look and feel your personal best. It's the summer clearances.